So as I said, my name is Suzanne Hart. Welcome to Mindset Mastery. Our conversation tonight is imperfect action is better than no action. So let me ask you this question. Are you someone who's getting ready to get ready? Are you someone who's dotting all your, crossing all your T's, dotting all your I's, making sure you have all your ducks in a row, checking the data, rechecking the data, because you want to be perfect before you get going? I'm going to say to you that imperfect action is better than no action at all, because you can't do anything while you're standing still. Now, last week I talked about imperfect action and why we sit in this place of perfection and getting ready to get ready is we're often afraid of jumping outside that comfort zone. So I told you, I promised you that I was going to have a guest that was going to, we're going to talk through what happened when she embraced getting uncomfortable, jumping outside of her comfort zone and embracing the possibility of imperfect action. Absolutely. So let me introduce this beautiful, beautiful woman sitting beside me. This, this is my good friend, Fazia Mursaza. Fazia hails from just outside of Toronto. And uh, she is probably one of the sweetest, kindest, most giving people I know. So Fazia, welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And you were too kind with your words. Thank you. <laughs> Such a warm welcome. <laughs> but it's so true. You, you know, you're one of those people that have one of those gentle, gentle spirits. So before we jump in, uh, please let everyone know a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, so like you said, I live just uh, east of Toronto. Um, I've been married. My anniversary this year, I think, will be 34 years. Um, I have two kids, both married, and first grandbaby on the way. So I'm excited about that. That's a whole new chapter opening up. And um, what can I say? My journey has taken me in some remarkable places, and I've met some amazing people, you yourself included, Suzanne. I mean, you and I have known each other for well over 15 years now yeah. and um and it's been incredible to to have you be be part of my journey and to to be there to witness it because i think that's so important is that you know we we often don't realize the importance of surrounding ourselves with people that not only are there for us but are there to remind us and to witness our our journeys and so um, thank you for, for being a part of my life. Uh, my pleasure. Now, before we jump in, I, I saw a notice come across my, my screen this morning that tomorrow is a very special day for you. For you. <laughs> it's your birthday. It is my birthday. Yes. So, so happy birthday. And you know, when you said you've been married for 34 years, I'm sure there's people going, what? Grandbabies, babies, two children. <laughs> And, and, you know, speaking of leap of faith, I, I, I'm going to have to have you back to tell the story of how you met your husband and you guys got married after knowing each other. How many, how many days? Almost a week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about stop getting ready to get ready. Imperfect <laughs> action is better than no action. One week they got married and it's how many years later? 34? I think 34, 33 or 34. I've lost count. Don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. So I, I see we have Christina watching. I see we have Richard watching. There's Cindy watching and people are beginning to join in. And yes, I did say she got married. Her and her husband got married after one week. Uh, we'll bring her back for that conversation and that story. So, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, imperfect action and really just getting beyond your comfort zone. And I really wanted to have a conversation with you about this because I've had the privilege of watching your journey and, 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 uh, and witnessing it, as you said. And I think what's so amazing is in the last year, it feels like I've, I've had the privilege of watching you spread your wings and really begin to soar in your own way. But I want to roll back to uh, 
tell us a little bit of what was going on for you, you know, that kept you from making, making decisions and following through on those decisions. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, and maybe a little bit later, I can go a little bit more into the background and I'll, I'll talk about, you know, growing up in my, my story, but it's interesting how the mind is always interpreting things and, and giving meaning to things that are going on around us. And we end up creating these beliefs about ourselves and about others um, that we carry with us and, and we find ourselves living into them. So, um, you know, my parents, my, okay, I'm going to tell my story. <laughs> my, par <laughs> my parents came to Canada when I was two years old and both of my younger brothers are born here. And, you know, just like many new um, immigrants coming here, it was to offer better opportunities for their family. Um, so when my youngest brother was of school age, my mom decided to get a job as well. Mm. Now, this was a long time ago, but it wasn't uncommon for the eldest sibling to take on the responsibility of caregiver for the youngest yeah. sibling. So at eight years old, um, with both of my parents working, it was my responsibility to get us to school on time, back home for lunch, back to school, and the babysitter for the youngest one, and then pick them up and come back home and be at home until one of the parents came home. Wow. And I still, yeah, did I you, still remember. Those keys around your neck. That's what I was just going to say. I, yeah, and you know, they have a term for us. We're called the latchkey kids. But I still remember wearing the, yeah, wearing the house key around my neck on a string of yarn because mm -hmm. at eight years old, I mean, I was a kid. If I put it in my pocket, I might have lost it, right? So around the neck. And, um, you know, like I said, it wasn't uncommon for parents to do this. And they were just trying, all parents, just trying to do the best that they could with the circumstances. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that despite all the responsibilities, um, you know, we had a great childhood, right? Mm -hmm. But um, however, that doesn't take away from the severity and the impact that that can have. Mm -hmm. So um, like I said, it's interesting because the mind is always interpreting things, right? And so for me, it ended up what I, what I believed was that my place and um, everything that I was meant to do was in service of other people, of, mm. of others. And so, um, you know, somehow I became, I started to believe and, and came into the belief that my worth and my value was in doing for others. Okay. And yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy. Like looking back and, and thinking about it, it's, it's pretty heavy, but carrying that with me and going into adulthood, I became that go-to person, the problem solver, the great listener. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with that list, right? Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, it wasn't until later in my life that I realized I was still wearing that key around my neck. You know, mm -hmm. I still get goosebumps when I think about it. Just, just that realization that what I had created um, in my mind as a child and how I lived into it and carried it with me and it became a part of who I was. It's almost like putting others first. If not putting others first um, was a feeling of letting them down. Mm -hmm. um, it's like there's a fear of not being accepted or liked. And so by doing for others, you're looking for that being accepted and you're looking for that approval. But subconsciously, we fear putting ourselves first or even succeeding. And there's always this struggle of self-doubt and, um, you know, it affects your mental and physical well-being. And so I think what happens is when you have that belief about yourself, you start to live a life smaller than you were meant to be living. Yeah, that's so powerful. And you know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm listening, reading a book by Sh uh, Shonda Rhimes, uh, the, year, the Year of Yes. And so here's this powerful 
successful woman who's like owns Thursday nights, you know, on, on TV and she's had, you know, scandal, how to get away with murder. Um, I, why can't I think of the other show, the first one that started for her. And, and, and as I'm listening to her, that is one of the things that she talked about. And she said, you know, as women, we are so conditioned to, to put everybody first, sacrifice. And, and if we're not sacrificing, we're not doing, we're not doing amazing things. And we're so socialized to, to not necessarily let ourselves be seen, set, to tap ourselves on the back and to be uncomfortable with our own successes. And so for a lot of people, they just don't, they just don't go after it. And even when they do get it, they, they, they don't acknowledge it in the way it should be. So totally get what, what you're saying. And I know for myself, I don't know about you, but I, I, we, we have the same affliction, right? Do for everybody else. I, I call that I wore the superwoman cape for everybody but myself. And, uh, and I, at one point, you know, I was exhausted. I was absolutely exhausted. And I remember, you know, going to my doctor saying, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just so tired. I don't know what to do. And he was like, there's nothing wrong with you, honey. You need to change your lifestyle. And it was exactly that. I was so busy giving to the world that I didn't give to, to Suzanne. There was no room mm-hmm. for Suzanne's successes. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, a hundred percent. I can, I can relate to that. And I'll tell you one more thing, and uh, you may agree with this as well, but that exhaustion wasn't just from giving and doing for others. It was carrying this mask of I'm okay. Yeah. It was just like, you know, it, it's yeah. just, it's such a burden. It's, and I call it the I'm okay syndrome because everything that happened in my life, all of the, you know, the struggles and the challenges and, and people were like, you know, there and how are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. And I would carry yeah. on like nothing. Yeah. What can yeah. I do for you? Let me, t- let me help you. Let me do this. And, and it was that piece, I think that was so exhausting. And I think, you know, when, when they talk about like just not carrying this burden, it, that's what it felt like. Yeah. It was just like, I, I want to break free from this I'm okay syndrome, but how do I do it? How, how can I let people know that I'm not okay? And what and will happen and what will they think when they find out? Exactly. Now, let me ask you this, because I know for myself, when, when I was in that same place, I, my identity was wrapped up in serving others. So I think part of how do you not do it was for me, the big question was, if I'm not giving to others and I'm not doing that thing, who am I? Who am I, right? Do I have any worth? What, what, like that was the thing for me. And I, and I, I got, I took a lot of pride in, in being able to say, I'm okay. I can juggle 50 balls at the same time. I'm superwoman. I can catch this. I can stay up all night and still get up in the morning and, and get to work and come home and be at the soccer field. I took great pride in the compliments I got from that. People were like, that's saying hard. I don't know how she does it all. Yeah. Right. And it, yeah. And it's like, that's what keeps you going. And you, you become so attached to that. Right. I know for myself, it was, it was the same. Um, just being that person, like I said, going into adulthood, that's the person that I became. That was what I had created for myself. And I say created for myself because I know now that it's a choice. Absolutely. But, um, I think the other piece of that, Suzanne, is you know, we, we show something, we have this, this mask that we wear and, and that's what everyone sees. So they don't know what's going on. But when you look in the mirror for myself, when I looked in the mirror, it was a completely different picture. And yeah. bit by bit, I started to recognize the person a little bit less each time until yeah. it was like, what happened to me? Where, Where did she, I go? Where did she go? Yeah. Where did she go? Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And just for people who are joining us, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Fazia Mertiza, um, and we're talking about imperfect action is better than no action. 
and really just, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone and actually do, doing it. Now, for those of you who are joining, you know, what I want to, want to let you know is that we actually have a free gift for you for joining. Um, it is in the description of, of this event that you're at, and it is our Mindset Mastery mini course. And why it's so timely in terms of this discussion is because the mini course is really designed for exactly what Fozzie is talking about. Because we are run by the conversations that live in our head. Those conversations evoke emotions and they and they and there are thoughts that bring up emotions and then they bring up what we tell ourselves but also what we tell the world i'm okay nothing's going on i'm perfect and so what the course is really designed to do is to really help you begin to get in touch with the mindset what's running you so definitely click the link and, and we'll also drop it in the comment section register for that um, and yeah, do we, um, it's my pleasure to send that to you. And it, it, it is, it's, it's, I believe it's, it's so powerful just to get, uh, begin to get present to your mindset. So, so Fazia, I, I want to talk about, uh, the, you know, it's been about the, a few years now and I, I guess you had taken a look in the mirror and thought this isn't working. I don't, I don't recognize this person anymore. And I remember the phone call when you called me and you said, I have a decision to make and I'm not sure if I want to do it. And, and, and really the decision was the choice to step outside of what was comfortable. Share a little bit about what it took to make that decision and what was holding you inside. Like what was holding you on this side when you actually wanted to break free? Uh -huh. I love that you said break free because really that's what I wanted to do was just, you know, break free of everything really. And, um, you know, I think that often when we think about where, where we are with our life and, and we may not be happy with our life as it is, um, we think that to get to the other side is there's this huge gap and it's like, I don't know how I got here. So how in the world am I going to get there, right? And it's almost like you just, you just um, are kind of dealing with what keeps showing up and you don't have time to really plan out and make decisions for yourself because it's almost like uh, life is just deciding for you and, and throwing uh -huh. these curveballs at you. And you're just trying to swing at the ball and not get hit. But meanwhile, you have your eye on this place that seems so far away. And I think that breaking the vicious cycle in our life is always about, it, it isn't always about breaking a specific habit. It isn't about changing, um, you know, a specific pattern or, because that's often what we think about, right? Well, if I want my life to be different, I just have to, I have to, change everything right and it's like i gotta go through a transformation because this isn't working but i think really what it's about is um it's in our, our first acceptance of of where we are because unless you accept that you're in a place that you don't want to be and not just accept in i'm i'm not happy but accept in in the sense of I, I want to make a change. I am the one that can make the change. It's my choice, right? And, and it's, it's really quite empowering um, to understand that if the choices that you made, and I know I said it seems like life is just throwing things at you, but keep in mind, everything we do is a choice, right? So if we decide to just de accept every card that life is throwing at us and focus on playing that hand, um, that, that's, that's our choice. But if we decide that, okay, life keeps throwing this at me, what am I doing? What is the cycle? What's the pattern here? What needs to change? And we just do like even little baby steps in a different direction. You know, it's kind of like, remember in mathematics when you change like two degrees here, but then at the end, it's like huge, right? It's such yeah. a big difference. And, and so I think it's in, in our daily habits that we can make just small, tiny little shifts. And, um, and then one day you just realize, wow, I've come so far. 
okay, I can keep doing this. And then you take some more steps and then you're like, oh, okay, I've come so far. And sometimes you may take a step and you say, oh, this is where I want to be. So you go back and you just, you know, change directions. But I think for me, what was, what really um, allowed me to, to get to that place where I wanted to make the choice uh, uh, to change was I had to think, what am I keeping up appearances for? Who am I doing this for? Because the life is my own. My life is my own. Uh -huh. And um, I, and if I'm not happy, then why am I doing it? Right. And it just got to the point where I realized um, I, I need to make a change, but I need to make the change for myself. And it was, it was that realization. I think that kind of set me onto the whole path of self care and self-awareness and self-compassion, mm -hmm. right? And, and just self-love. I love it. And, and I love the fact that you said, I had to accept that I'm not happy. I had to accept that this place wasn't working. And I think that's the first thing. So you make this, so you make this decision, right? Did you, did you, did you, um, and you knew where you were going because you said, I saw something out there that mm -hmm. I wanted. So you had a vision and, and did you have a plan? I didn't have a plan. And I know you say that, and maybe I, I implied that I had a vision. I didn't really have a vision okay. of where I was going. I just knew that it, it, it had to be somewhere different from here. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's very cool because for me, one of the things that um, I knew was, and I'll, we'll come back to the plan for a minute, but I knew that this, this was really painful right here and anywhere could be less, must be less painful than this. So let's just go wherever. So, so we're on the phone and you're saying, and when I say you have a plan, it, the plans can be like this big, right? Yeah, true. So <laughs> you're, you're on the phone and you're going, Suzanne, I have this opportunity to enroll in this program. And I know it's going to be like life changing, but it's going to be, it's going to make me so uncomfortable. So your plan was enroll in this program. Mm -hmm. and put my hands in people who know, know a little bit about where getting me somewhere different. Mm -hmm. So, so I think what I want to ask you is what made you, cause in order, cause you were like, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. And yeah. I remember in the conversation the what you were stuck on was it's going to be uncomfortable. They're going to stretch yeah. me. It's going to yeah. be uncomfortable. So how did you get to the place where it was like, okay, it's going to be uncomfortable? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, so much in that conversation. Um, I remember having that conversation with you. I think, um, hmm, I'm trying to think of how I can really word this. So yes, it was going to be uncomfortable because I was going to, for the first time, really have to um, take a look at, at what my story was, mm -hmm. right? And I think that oftentimes, for many people, our story scares us, right? And, you know, whatever your past may be, whatever your childhood may be, whatever the trauma, whatever, right, your story what is. Um, the past can be very scary, but I think that, and that's what frightened me because, you know, again, we're going to go, I'm going to go back to society and culture and environment teaches us and conditions us to put ourselves on the back burner, especially as women. But um, it also conditions us when we go through tough situations in life or we feel like there has to be something different, there has to be something better. Um, we're told, you know, pull up your big girl panties and carry on. This is life. Right. And so you continue doing that. And then when you actually have an opportunity to, to sit down and to look at what your story was and how you got to where you are, I think that that can be really, really scary because we just try to push it down and we, you know, we pretend that we're okay and, and that, you know, oftentimes we don't talk about it. Right. And, and I needed to talk about it because 
I kept going around and around in circles and I kept getting to this one point and then it would be that cycle again. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, and it was because there were so many um, unaddressed areas, right? And so if you remember from my story, having that overwhelm of responsibility, I, I wanted to rebel against that. So anything in my life that I felt I was being pressured or having that responsibility, I would start to, I would start to let go of things. And, and, you know, like I, here I am juggling all these balls and then all of a sudden I feel like, no wait, this is too much. And I would just let everything fall. Right. And, um, and I think that when, when I had this um, opportunity to really take a look at my story and to really look at everything I, I had gone through, it, was, it wasn't as bad as I thought because uh -huh. I had all the emotions that I had built up, right? Because remember, when something is going on, your mind is telling you something, right? And creating a story, and that's our survival mode. That's, that's what we do, right, as humans. But if our mind was able to do that in that moment, then looking back at it, we can also train our mind to look at things from a different perspective and a different angle so that we can say, yes, that happened and we can't change our past. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't change your past, but the past doesn't have to equal the future. And so if you look at the past from a different perspective, you can take the things that are positive and can move you forward in the direction that you want to go and you can use those as stepping stones. So when I was, you know, put in the situation where I had to actually look at that, I was terrified because I thought, I, I don't want to go back and look at all of the things that I had done and why I did them. But then when I actually did, I thought, you know, what can I take away from my past? I learned how to be a fantastic problem solver. I yeah. learned resilience. You know, I learned how to be resilient. I learned responsibility. I and there's so many things that you can take away from that, right? And so I think that um, making that decision is always scary because you don't know what's on the other side of it. But once you step into it um, and you start to compartmentalize and you start to organize things as they're showing up, it's so much easier than our mind makes it. I makes love it. it. And, 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 and you're, getting, you're getting loves and... And, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And, 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 you know, and, and, and I'm like, Sharia saying, thank you for your transparency. And, and, you know, what's really interesting about what you're saying is that I loved when you said that, you know, when you think about your past and not wanting to deal with it and your mind's like, and, and then your mind also goes, but if you go deal with it, it's going to be like this big. And, 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 and I love the fact that you're saying your mind starts to make up this massive, this is what could happen. And, and I remember our com when we had this conversation, it was really about, you know what? You can deal with wh whatever you're, whatever's going to happen. And, 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 and it was really unpacking the fact that you were creating a story that we did, you, you, neither I knew it was true. And so can you just create a new story, right? And, and take a leap of faith. So you, so you take this leap of faith and, and you, and you, so you've accepted that you got to make a change and, I, and, and so key, you make this decision, the big, and I love the, the piece I want people to get. The large part of her plan was I got to go do this program. That was it. And I, and I want people to get that because sometimes we think the plan has to be, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, then I'm going to turn right, then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I remember last week I said that nothing, no plan, nothing reveals itself until you take the first step. And then the first step will go, here's your next step. So you went into the program, you said, this is the first step. And then you just kind of went with what they told you and things began to change. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's so cool because that is really where change happens is those, 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 small, those small steps. Absolutely. And, and so was it uncomfortable? Um, you know what? It, it, it was, but I knew that it was something that I, I was committed to. 
and I knew that on the other side of this was I was going to be free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and I love, you know, the reason I asked you that is, is that we often, we often don't do things because they're uncomfortable. And then we often stop doing things because they're uncomfortable. And, and I think what you're saying is I looked beyond the discomfort. Yeah. I looked, you, I looked. Yeah. You, you have, you have to do that. You, you have <laughs> to do that. Um, because you know, that's where your growth is. Right. And, and they call it growing pains. It's not called growing pains for nothing. <laughs> So when you say you looked beyond the discomfort, where did you look to? Because I want people to get, like, what, what were you looking to when you looked beyond the discomfort? Um, I think it's just, it was just to be able to um, unpack some of that heaviness that, you know, you, we carry with us. And, and just looking for how I would be able to just put down some of that luggage that I've been carrying with me uh, my whole life. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you know what's really interesting is uh, I, one of the books I've recently read for, is Brene Brown's uh, Power of Vulnerability. And, and she says one of the reasons that we choose not to be vulnerable with ourselves and with other people is that we are so conditioned to feel ashamed of so many things. We are so conditioned, conditioned to judge so many things, particularly in, in, in our society. We are so, many, so conditioned to do all these different things that that's what we're running from. If I don't want, I don't want, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm shaming myself, I'm dissing myself, I'm guilting myself, all these different things. And it's when you're actually willing to look and say, I'm just gonna look, and I know it's going to be uncomfortable, but I'm not going to shame myself. I'm not going to do all these things. I'm just going to look. That's when you actually, the looking's not as hard as you think, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's scary because, you know, there, first of all, this, this image has been created that everything is fine, right? But then also when we carry around that kind of burden and we carry around that stress, it not only affects our physical health, it affects our mental health. And there's so much stigma and so much, I guess, negative conversation around people just, you know, striving for mental well-being that they're, they're afraid to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think one of, the, one of the things that opened up for me was to be able to say, yes, you know what? I went through stuff and by holding it in and keeping it suppressed and, you know, and, and it just exploded. And, you know, I had, I had all these things that I was dealing with. It affected not just my mental health, but my physical health. And so I think that in order for, um, and, and that's what really I think is the scary piece because a lot of people are afraid to say, I'm, I'm dealing with something. I, I need some help, you know, because we have this, we have this concept maybe um, that creates the stigma that people are broken, but I don't believe that people are broken. I think that people just sometimes need a little bit guidance and some yep. support to get through things. And we've created this whole, we've created this whole um, stigma, this whole conversation and the dialogue around um, mental health issues that people are afraid to have those conversations. And unfortunately, people that are dealing with issues are afraid to get the help that they so need because they're afraid of that dialogue and they're afraid yeah. of those labels that come with it. And you, and you know, and you know, sometimes it is like we walk around with these tough shells, these tough exteriors. And whenever I think of it, because I think we have to be broken. Like, and I don't mean that I am broken, but we, the, we have to experience the breaking of the armor, the breaking of the outer shell, the breaking of these things. And, and you know, we, we talk about our breaking point and it's usually when we hit our breaking point that the beauty of that's what's, that's inside gets to finally flow out. But be, before the beauty, beauty flows out, we got to do the work. It's almost like we got to discard the shell and we got to break through it. And, and, and that's, that's the piece that most of us are afraid of. 
But I think every, I know for myself, every new level I've gotten to in my life, I've hit a, I've hit a, a place where I had to, I had a, a breaking point or a rub or a really uncomfortable period of time. I've grown, I've reflected, I've learned, I've looked at myself and then boom. And then just when I think it's going again and I'm like, oh, I'm cool. Then it's like, you've been here too long, Suzanne. I hit something and I go through this, like, it feels like, you know, what's going, I'm going in the wrong direction. I hit this place, I get to this breaking point and then it's the next level. And I, and I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think it's our vulnerability and our willingness to reflect and feel, and, and feel like we're being broken in a moment. And not that I am broken, but the, 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 the um, coping mechanism, the exterior, the, the stuff that we put out into the world needs to be broken mm -hmm. so that the, the, the beauty of us gets to shine. Yeah, because it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're so right. You're so right. And um, it, it's, it's really amazing that, um, you know, we, we have so much to offer. We have so much to offer and, and we're so, we're all we're looking for. I think everyone, all we're looking for is comfort, right? We just want to be comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you allow yourself to be stuck and you allow yourself to stay in a place where you're unhappy because you're afraid of being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you said like every time there's been any growth for you, there's been some discomfort or some rubbing or some growth, right? And I think really that oftentimes we think that um, life is just happening to us and things are being thrown at us. And when I look back now and I said, you know, all these curveballs are being thrown at you. And I look back now and I realize that it wasn't life happening to me, but it was the things in life happening for me to be guided in the direction that I was meant to go. Oh, that, that is like, somebody put that in the comment section, things in life happening for me. That's a mindset shift. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when we, when we can understand that, then you actually look forward to the growth because then it's like, ooh, okay, so I overcame something. And then you're, you find that comfort in where you are. And then there's another opportunity that you've prepared yourself for. And that's why the, the challenge shows up. Because now it's like, all right, you've done this. Now it's time to, you know, up your game. And so that challenge shows up and it really pushes you if you choose to grow and to become the next best version so that you're ready for that next place of being comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then once you've played that level, then it's like something else comes and it's like uh, up your game again. Absolutely. And you know, uh, we're talking to Fazia Murtaza and she is laying down a shift in mindset this, this evening. And just to let everybody know, the word tonight is mastermind. And if you put mastermind in the comments section, you'll have opportunity to register for the mini course as well as an opportunity to spend some, uh, have a mindset mastery moment, mentoring moment with me, Suzanne Hart. And we can continue some of the stuff that Fazi is laying down because it really is that shift and getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And there's tools and tips to do so. You know, one of the things, Fazia, how did you get past, I know for myself, I was busy looking good. I was busy being the perfectionist. I was busy um, when I was going through the journey, you know, and even today I have to, I, I have to get over myself because I want to show up looking good. And, um, and growth is messy, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> It's messy and sometimes you don't look so good. I, yeah. I, mean, I recently had a call with, with my mentor and I was boo-hoo and I was a hot mess. And, but once we, once we got through it and I had my shift, it was like next, I knew what to do, next level. But I wasn't looking good in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. <laughs> that's, that's such a good point because we're so caught up in, in appearances. 
we're so caught up in that but then it's like what i said before like who are we keeping up appearances for yeah yeah like really ask your ask yourself i had to ask myself who am i keeping up appearances for you Um, know yeah me too i was like the joneses don't even know me so (laughs) why am i keeping up with them right Yeah. yeah and and we think other people are concerned with our life and they're really not because everyone is just too busy trying to hold their shit together in their own life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so true. It's so you true. Know, and, and, you know, it, it's not, it's not right or wrong, good or bad or anything. It's just, it's this journey that we call life. It's this thing that we're experiencing. Right. And we keep forgetting that, um, we we're, we're doing it first for ourselves, And then through that, we can determine what we're able to offer to others. But if we're just focusing on what we can offer to others, what happened to me was I lost myself in the midst of all that. And to the point where I wasn't able to offer to others anymore because I didn't, I didn't know where I was and what I was offering and what I was doing. So um, I just had like a complete shutdown. (laughs) I, if I could rewind this video, I'd put it like, did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? Did you guys get that? If you aren't, you, if you're busy giving for others and you're not giving to yourself, you go, you're going, you're going to get lost. Absolutely. I, you know, so one of the things I saw of you, you know, particularly over this year is you went from, uh, I used to call it the Houdini, the witness protection program. <laughs> like you, you would, you would be like, chugging along, juggling 55 million balls, and then it'd be like, where'd Fuzzy go? Right? And you'd go into the witness protection program, and then a few months later, I'd be like, she'd be like, hey, here I am. And now, and if, you, if you're that person, let us know, right? Because we, we, people do. We bail, we, we crash and burn, we, we, we're, we're out, we're down for the count. But one of the things I've really admired and watched over the years since you focused since like the year of Fazia happened, right? Where you were like the number one uh, in your life and possibly for the first time is you've become so solution focused. Like you, you have become, uh, you know, you have, you have pulled rabbits out of the hat. You have like figured out how to do, and you're constantly showing up, not only for yourself, I think yourself first and for other people. What was the shift that had you be able to go, what's the solution? What's the solution? What's the solution? That's a great question. Um, So many things play a factor in that. I think um, that once I was able to really put, put everything out on the table and really just take a look at, you know, this, this journey, that I've been on and I chose to, you know, uh, like I decided that I was going to pick and choose what I wanted to take with me as I continued on this journey. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was able to unpack the luggage, if you will, that I didn't want to carry with me anymore. I think what happened was um, I had access to things that I didn't see before that, you know, um, like, opportunity to really pour into relationships that were important to me um opportunities to really focus on myself because i was had neglected myself for so long um opportunities to really look at what i what was my purpose and what what was the reason that i was doing everything and um you know oftentimes we just get so caught up in the day in and day out and I think that um, when we when we do that and we get caught up, we we don't we take away from ourselves that quiet time, that solitude for us to really focus on what our purpose is. And I think that once I was able to create a clearing for myself and I had that space to think, um, I was able to unpack and let go of the things that I didn't. I realized didn't serve me anymore. And I was able to take along with me the things that I could use as stepping stones and the people that I I wanted to surround myself with that I knew would support me in in my path and my journey. 
I couldn't have asked for a better answer. And, and, I, and I love the fact that you focused on taking that time for solitude, taking that time for reflection, taking that time for um, just looking, right? And, 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 and you know, um, I remember, I can't remember who I would, who, who I was, it was Mark Victor Hansen. And Mark Victor Hansen said he had a think, a think chair. And he would, and he would sit in that chair for two hours and just think. And I thought, wow, that's really fascinating to do nothing but think. And I, and so I took it on. So Saturday mornings is my think time. I sit in my think chair and Saturday and Sundays, and it's for about two hours. But that's when I work through just what you're talking about. I take the time and, and, and do you find that when you do that and you clear stuff out, solutions just drop in? They absolutely do. And it's funny that you would say think chair because I actually have a think chair. I have my favorite chair that that's where I go. And, and it's a really big and wide chair and I, I sit in it. I cross my legs in it and I just, you know, I have like usually a cup of tea and, um, and I yep. just sit yep. and I, and I'm reflecting and, you know, sometimes writing and sometimes just, just quiet and just sitting and it's by a window so I can, I can look out the window and on a clear day, I can see the lake at the horizon. And so it's just, you know, um, and it's my, my thinking space. And, and I think that we, we don't allow ourselves to enjoy things like that on a daily basis. And we should, because we deserve it. And, 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 you know, it's, it's so important, particularly like the, you know, for the women watching, it's so important to not get caught in the conditioning of being the martyr, like you said, that I've got to do everything for everybody else, that my, my worth is, you know, not, not doing for me. And, and, you know, I sacrificed everything for my family. I sacrificed everything for my kids. And we hear that so often, like proudly, but then, then we're, we're left empty with meaningless lives. Mm -hmm. at some point and I, and so you're really modeling the opera the need to 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 step aside and nurture yourself and pour into yourself and really begin to think and ask yourself what do I want what do I need what's important to me what do I what do I want to do just for me in this moment mm -hmm. um what's it like because you know I I it's been a joy watching you and, you know, I joke with you and go, who are you? Who is this woman in front of me? Because it's just like evolution, evolution, evolution. And it's so fun to see. What's it like to be in this place where you're taking absolutely inspired action? Um, you know, I talked earlier about um, not recognizing myself a little bit each time I looked in the mirror. And you know, before I answer your question, I just want to go back a little bit. You, you mentioned something just now. And I had a conversation with my husband a number of years ago. And I said, you know, our kids are growing up and we need to find things to keep ourselves busy because they're not going to need us in their lives as much as they do when they're younger. Mm -hmm. And we have to fill the gap with something because we if all we are is parents and nurturers when we're no longer playing that role we don't know who we are because we've identified ourselves with that oh my gosh right i'm you know i'm i'm going to go back and listen to this and go okay little a post right now if all we are are nurturers and that role is taken away who are we yeah and yeah. And I think, and I think it's you, like, we, we are nurturers, we are moms, we are all these different things and we can't lose ourselves to one role. That's so true. And, and it's so important and it's so difficult for, for parents, especially of, of new parents and young, of parents of young kids. It's so difficult to understand that you were never meant to put someone else's life before yours even your child, you have to be your best in order to offer the best for your child. And oftentimes, you know, when we, we as moms and culture and society and everything, 
you know, conditions us to be that martyr and we put ourselves last and we're just like running, 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 running. But what are we running after? Because the thing is that our kids are our responsibility, but we have to teach them by being the role model, right? So if we don't teach our children how to take care of themselves through taking care of ourselves, we're, we're really continuing that cycle, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to break the cycle. So we have to teach our, our children the importance of self-care. We have to teach our children the importance of the relationship and the boundaries of that relationship. So I'm a mom, but I, I'm also my own person. And the importance that I have to get, that I give to myself is going to be what I role model for my kids as they take care of themselves. Otherwise, if they see me as a martyr and they see me sacrificing, uh, like so many parents do, that's what they're going to grow up and that's what they're going to create for themselves, right? And yeah, absolutely. And this is so important for moms who have like boy children, so important. Yes. They need to see women who are setting boundaries and putting themselves first. For girl children, it is so important because they need to learn how to put themselves first. Yes. And, and you know, you just you just kind of drop the mic, like, you know, as parents, it's not our job to put anyone before us. I think I think it'd be like people going, What? what but i love the way you backed it up because you know if I, i'm no i am of no use to anybody when i'm i'm not at my best right if i if i wear myself down to nothing because i'm putting the world before me then i'm 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 i i will disappear as you said and the best thing i can do is to fill my cup up every day first and show up as my best self because that's my when I'm the best role model. Mm -hmm. ah. Absolutely. So wow. And thank you. And I and I it's it's cool that you said that. I always tell people that you know um, we can't give from an empty cup, which you've you've said many many times. But I tell people it isn't about filling our cup up first and and then giving to other people from that. It's about filling your cup up and get giving from the overflow because yeah. when you give from the overflow, you're giving from a place of abundance. And when you give from a place of abundance, the receiving is from a place of abundance and that changes the dynamics of every relationship. You know, that's when you're, that's when you're able to truly give. I always, I always have the analogy in my head that I'm giving from the saucer, mm -hmm. right? We don't get in. You, you, no one gets to get in the cup. Right. You, can't, you can't, no, don't drink from the cup. The only person that drinks from my cup is me right? I'm giving you from my saucer. So mm -hmm. my job is to make sure that cup's always full and it's overflowing. So there's stuff in the saucer. And this is my biggest learner is that when I give from the saucer, I truly give. I don't give from a place of resentment because I was the angry giver. Mm -hmm. I don't give from a, a place of there's not enough for me. I can truly and freely abundantly give with no expectation because I have expectations when my cup feels empty. But when my cup is full, I can give you, I can give, I can have no expectations. Mm -hmm. And, and so it really is that learn. And that's when life becomes juicy and you're moving through the world with not desperate action, but that inspired action. Yeah, that's so true. And that's so powerful. And, and that really underlines how I, I truly believe that we're each here to be of service to others, but that, truly underlines how we position ourselves to be of service to yeah. others um, in a very abundant way. And can you imagine children being raised with that mindset? Can you imagine the next generation and the generation after that, if what we're teaching them is the importance of self-care and filling our cup up and giving from the overflow. Can you imagine what the world would look like? Oh, you know, we, we're going to put a full stop right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I, I wanted, I was looking forward to sitting down and having this chat. I knew you were going to drop so many beautiful 
uh, you know, there's nuggets and shares for everyone listening. But I really love the fact that you spoke to the moms on the phone, on the call, who's listening. You spoke to the women on the line. And you really spoke to our conditioning and our socialization. And so thank you so, so very much. Uh, for everyone that's listening, I have been speaking to Fazia Mertziza. Uh, and, and Fazia, just one last thing before we wrap. And I know we're right at the top of the hour. That was uh, quick. <laughs> I know, always does. When I'm sitting down talk, having these juicy conversations with amazing people, they just go like this. Um, you know, when someone has mental health and they're struggling, what would be one line that you would say to them? Reach out for support. There are resources available. Um, don't, don't allow the stigma and the, the negative dialogue stop you from living your best life. And I think um, my huge takeaway in my own journey has been the strategies that I've learned. I'm, I'm now able to, to share them with others and and I've been there where where you are right now and I can I can relate and I can show you how I how I got past it. I can show you how I got past it. But the first thing that you have to do is is want to make a change. That has to be your decision because unless you want the change and unless you're committed to it, no one can do anything to help you. Love it. Thank you. Everyone watching, we have been listening to Fazia Mertiza. Um, the word today is mastermind. I know that the, the link for the Mindset Mastery mini course has been dropped in the comments section. You can also pick it up in the invitation to the event, or you can put mastermind in and get access to the mini course or sitting down for a Mindset Mastery moment, moment with Suzanne. Either way, uh, take advantage, because uh, what we talked about today is so life-changing. Fazia, thank you so much. Thank it's you. my thank pleasure. You. Thank you for having me. I have enjoyed myself. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, Suzanne. My, thank you. My name is Suzanne Hart. You have been listening to Mindset Mastery. We will be back here next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely we re register for next week's uh, session. Stay blessed, fill your cup up first. And as Fazi said, give from the overflow, that saucer. Take care everyone, blessings, and we will see you back here next week.